Hi YouTube, this is Laura at Aquamarine18, back with another video. It's been a while, it's been a busy few weeks, um, and I'm excited to be back here on YouTube, and this time I seem to have managed, at least so far, not to chop the top half of my head off in the um, video display, so that's a good start. Um, you'll know from the title of the video that I am here with a deck unboxing. It was my birthday last week and I decided that I would treat myself to a tarot deck and an oracle deck um, as a self-birthday gift. I actually have yet to pick a tarot deck yet. Um, I'm looking at a few, finalizing, decision making. Um, my wish list actually isn't that long right now, um, so I'm just kind of making um, that final decision. But picking an oracle deck to treat myself to was a really easy decision actually. And you'll know from the title of the video that the deck that I will be unboxing is the Nocturna Oracle, which is a 48-card deck and guidebook by Megan Weirweedin. Apologies to Megan for probably very much mispronouncing her name. Uh, her Etsy shop is The Creeping Moon. I will link the shop below. And the reason that I chose to get the Nocturna Oracle um, is that I already have and very much love Megan's tarot deck, which will be familiar to many of you, which is the Anima Mundi tarot here. I'm not actually sure if I have the second or third edition of the Anima Mundi. Um, it comes with a few. The later editions have um, some blood that was present on the Ten of Swords has been removed in the later editions, and mine is one of the ones that doesn't have it, if that helps. Uh, I really, really love the Anima Mundi Tarot for a number of reasons. It has one of my favorite moon cards of all time, and the moon is my favorite Major Arcana card. It's so simple, but so beautiful, and I think says so much. And I love the way that Megan paints the skies in her many of her cards, like this Two of Wands. And I really like, and I know some people don't like this, um, I really like that I feel like Anima Mundi Tarot is a kind of halfway between Rider Waite Smith system and a pip deck. So you have the pips like this, for example, in the Eight of Pentacles here, um, arranged there. But you also have some imagery that speaks to Rider Waite Smith kind of meaning. So we have in the Rider Waite Smith, the Eight of Pentacles has the person working at the workbench making the pentacles hard at work. And here we have beavers working to make a dam, which makes a lot of sense. I think similarly in the, in the Ten of Cups, you have usually this kind of um, happy family scene. And in the Anima Mundi Terra, you get the harmonious school of fish with, in a kind of pip style, the ten cups. I think the deck is really beautiful. The guidebook that it comes with is um, not too big. Um, it fits inside the box, which is great. Um, it's a small book like this, and it has a very few spreads there, and it has card meanings upright and reversed for each, and she does provide for the cards that have animals in them what the name of the animal is, doesn't go into too much detail about why the particular animals were chosen for particular um, cards, but I think if you work with animal energy, if you have associations with animals, it's quite um, intuitive, at least for me, to tell why certain animals were chosen for certain cards. So choosing the bees for the Three of Pentacles, for example, for a card that in Rider Waite Smith speaks so much to hard work to teamwork in particular makes a ton of sense choosing um, an animal like a sea lion that's really playful and really communal and has really strong kind of familial and friendship bonds for something like the three of cups makes complete and total sense similarly the four of pentacles with the raccoon there kind of hoarding his pentacle perhaps a lot of sense and other than this it's Maybe worth mentioning, I think, for, for the Animal Mundi Terra, the cardstock is great. Um, it's very kind of linen type finish. It has the gold gilding on the sides, which looks beautiful and has held up quite well, actually, to a lot of shuffling. The box is sturdy, lots to um, 
make the Anima Mundi Terra one of my favorite decks. So when I saw that Megan was coming out with an Oracle deck, I knew that I would purchase it eventually, and it's been out a few months, it's not brand new, but for my birthday this is the deck that I chose that I'm very excited to now unbox. So you can see I have taken off the plastic, I don't um, need to fiddle with the plastic on the camera, but to show the way that this deck comes, it comes in a shrink wrap around the box, which is then tucked inside a bubble wrap, I can pop that later. Um, and inside, shipped in this box, as above, so below, with Megan's website there, and then just padded with some tissue paper, which I know that the cats will really enjoy playing with, so that's like a little bonus. Um, first kind of um, observations about the Oracle deck for folks who have the Anima Mundi Tarot also, at least with my edition, this box is slightly wider and slightly taller, so a little tiny bit bigger. Um, similar, very sturdy. Uh, I don't always store decks in the box that they come in, particularly if it's kind of like a tuck box. I would rather have them in a, in a bag. But with a deck like this, this is great for putting on a shelf. It's protected. Um, I feel like the cards aren't going to get damaged in there. Um, so that's fantastic. And now we can open the box. Another kind of small but really nice detail is the little space here to hold. Some of the decks that don't have that is very difficult to get the lid off, but this one, oh, very easy to take the lid off. We have on the inside of the box a star sky there, and around the edges of the box, the moon phases on either side, and on the ends as well. So, similar to the Anima Mundi Tarot, the same style of guidebook here, um, Nocturnal Oracle Guidebook, art and words copyrighted to Megan and with her website The Creeping Moon on the back. So we can have a quick look at the guidebook and the guidebook has a table of contents in the front. So the cards are listed here with the page number and that's helpful because looking at the first card that's visible on the top of the stack these cards are not numbered so having that list there at the beginning is going to be I think helpful for looking up meanings also like the Anima Mundi Tarot it has a introduction a brief one page here um, explaining uh, the deck and I'll maybe just read the first paragraph and then give a, give a skim to give an idea of what's there. So Megan starts off, while our bodies rest, creatures of the night emerge from the shadows. This 48 card oracle deck is inspired by plant and animal folklore and the mysteries of the night. The organisms in these cards dwell in hidden places, away from the sun, in forests, caves, and the bottom of the sea, drawing energy from the moon and stars. So she notes that the deck can be used on its own, it can be used with a tarot deck, and she says the guidebook is optional, so she emphasizes that her kind of keywords and meanings are a suggestion, and that you may kind of have your own associations, which is something that really appealed to me about this deck. I feel, I'm very interested in reading the guidebook for this one, but I feel like the imagery is so kind of evocative that inevitably anyone working with it, myself included, will have kind of their own ideas about what a card might speak to in the context of the question or other cards that have been drawn. So there are two small spreads in the guidebook here. One is a three card spread that she has listed um, a few different um, meanings for the three cards. And then the other is a new moon spread that's a six card spread. And then she goes straight into the card meanings and it looks like each card has the name of the card, which will be on the card itself as well, a few keywords, three to four, and a small paragraph um, for the meaning. So we won't read all of them, but I'll perhaps read one um, as I go along. And normally for an unboxing, I will just say, um, because I haven't done one like this before, I would normally have kind of a hesitancy or I wouldn't 
um, show every single card in an unboxing like this. I think that there might be some kind of copyright issues there, and you don't want to kind of give everything away um, so that others who are buying the deck have the kind of joy of unboxing the deck as well. But I will say, you know, and I did think quite consciously about this, Megan has on her website, on her Etsy shop, as well as on other shops that sell this deck, like Little Red Tarot sells this deck, for example, you can see all of the cards. They're all posted there. So I'm not, um, in showing each card in turn, I'm not showing something that is not um, having been made visible by the artist herself already. So I feel okay about that for this deck in ways that I might not in other cases, it's worth saying. So the deck comes here in a plastic, just a plastic um, band, I guess. Uh, but the deck, um, the box was, was shrink wrapped, so that's great. Um, so that just comes off here. It has a similar gold gilding on the edge. Can I get it? Very nice. And they have the slight, they have the slight uh, new gilded deck stick, but they're going to slide very nicely. They have the same or very similar linen finish to the Anima Mundi. Similar. Um, thicknesses I would say there. The backs for this deck have a moon on them here and on a navy background. So they're not reversible but for an oracle deck that is not something that I um, would really think about to be honest. For a tarot deck I want reversible backs so that I have the option um, maybe I'll make a video about reversals later, but for an Oracle deck, I, I have never used reversals for an Oracle deck. So in no way does, does that detract from that for me? It wouldn't even be a consideration. So I can tell already this deck is incredible and it has, um, you know, everything that I love about the Anima Mundi and Megan's artwork. So we'll get straight into the cards just to have a quick skim. It doesn't look like there's any real, um, order to the cards, as I mentioned, they're not, um, they're not numbered and they're definitely not alphabetized either. So I think that they just come in the, the order that they come in and there's no kind of system to that at all. So the first card we have here, and I want to just check that I'm not showing two by accident, Dusk. It's amazing. It reminds me a little bit of that favorite moon card. Moth, really pretty on a black background. Fog, if you could see already, will the camera focus? This reminds me a little bit of the um, jungle on the world card in the Anima Mundi as well. Um, but fog, you know, you can come up with immediately lots of kind of associations with this, right? Not um, not being sure of where one's going, not being sure about, um, you know, the outcome of a, of a decision that one needs to make now, perhaps um, feeling a bit um, confused or misled by the fog. There's a lot, so there's lots of things that you could kind of come up with um, to go with a card like that. Jellyfish. Reminds me very much of Animal Mundi here again. Beautiful. It really looks transparent, almost, as jellyfish are. Fennec Fox. Well, I don't think I've seen him before. He has very large ears here. Wisteria. So this is not an animal um, oracle deck. I love animal oracle decks, but it's a very much nature-based, so there's a lot of plant cards in here as well. Wisteria. Chambered Nautilus. Orchid. And flowers are not something that I work with too, too much, um, to be honest. I don't have any oracle decks that are flower-based, though there are a few that are um, very beautiful, I think. So these are some cards that I think I'll use the guidebook for more. Ocelot. Looks like he's perhaps heard something and is craning to hear what it was there. Kelp, like seaweedy. 
beautiful. And the cards are very, very dark, um, suitably for, for a deck called Nocturna. Right? Badger. Frog. Manta Ray. That's not one that I've seen in a lot of animal oracle decks. Coral Snake. Night Sky. So here we have the same um, as the inside of the box. Scallop. I will say one thing with the with the cards being so dark. This deck, um, you've watched me open it for the first time. Um, I've never shuffled it or anything like that, but I am getting a little tiny bit of white um, chipping. It probably won't show up on the camera, but maybe a little bit of white chipping there on the edge of the card where the um, gilding has been separated. So that's something that will happen. I mean, that's okay with use. I I like my cards to look kind of worn in. If anything, um, it speaks to them being enjoyed, and I think that that's totally fine, but something to be aware of. Weeping Willow. Mushrooms. Now here's a good example um, card to maybe we'll look up the meaning for. Um, I have very particular associations around mushrooms because for me they are a serious allergen, a dietary allergen. So when I think mushrooms my kind of immediate thought is avoid. <laughs> avoid, avoid, avoid. That is a thing that makes you sick. <laughs> so perhaps we can see what the um, guidebook has to say about this. And I will say looking at this now that the guidebook table of contents is in the order that the deck comes in. So no numbers, no system, no kind of alphabetical, no pattern to that order, but the order aligns. So for mushrooms in the guidebook, we have the keywords growth in dark times and longevity. And Megan writes that Asian cultures associate mushrooms with longevity and strength. Certain edible mushrooms such as shiitake were used as herbal remedies for centuries. Mushrooms grow in the darkest, most unexpected places in damp soil and rotting wood. Some species, such as morels, grow in places where there were previously fires. Even in difficult times, life finds a way. So that's a really lovely kind of positive um, reading for a card that I would immediately see and want to put as far away from me as possible, not because the picture isn't beautiful, but because of my own associations with it. So I'm going to look forward to um, looking through the rest of these for sure. Ashfidel. I did not know that Ashfidel was the name of a plant, but it is the name of some local, um, like place, it's a local place name near where I live. So that's interesting. I'm going to look up that one later. Blue Morpho Butterfly. Beautiful. I always love seeing these when you go to like a I'm sure there's a name for it, but the kind of enclosure with butterflies in it, a kind of a nature center or something like this. These always are so striking and beautiful. Pitcher plant, some cards sticking here. Pitcher plant. I'm really going to have to look up the plants because I don't know, um, other than I guess now knowing that these are plants that kind of thrive in darker environments because they're in the nocturnal oracle, I don't really know anything about these. Shark. Very cool. And in Megan's kind of painting style, I really like um, the way that she uses light in her work, the light off the water, um, in skies, and here you can see um, the light just catching the shark underwater in a really beautiful way. Gecko. Conch. Lots of associations for that one for sure. Aurora, beautiful. I've only seen the Aurora Borealis once. Um, I would have to go quite far north from where I am to, to see it, but it is truly incredible and awe-inspiring for sure. The first crystal card, Moonstone. 
one of my favorites. Slug. I really like that this deck has so many animals that aren't often um, in an animal oracle. You know, there's certain animals that every oracle deck that's animal focused has, like lion and bear and uh, eagle, wolf, and so on. Um, but not many have have the slug. And it's nice the slug will get some appreciation in this deck. I like that. Similarly, rat. Another, they're very dark, so they're hard to show. Rat. Starfish. Owl. He was bound to show up at some point. Very wise, of course. Geode. Very cool. Cayman. Here's the Cayman. The caiman looks like a sort of um, alligator-type creature. Maybe we can quickly look up the caiman because I'm curious about what they're all about here. So the caiman, and she gives, and she did this in the Anima Mundi Oracle too. She gives a uh, Latin name as well as the um, kind of colloquial, I guess, or English name for the animal. So caiman. Not going to attempt the Latin name, that would be terrible. And she notes in her description that during her trip to the Amazon in 2018, they took a night canoe ride to look for Cayman. So that answers my question, which was where, um, where does the Cayman reside? And so her description there has um, some reference to Inca mythology and kind of um, the Cayman's behavior and, and what they do. So that's really neat. I really appreciate um, that because it gives a kind of extra level of insight as to how she got from the animal or plant or stone that she picked to the the meaning that she has put in the guidebook. Snow. I must say this is another one unfortunately because of where I live. Um, snow is another one that screams avoid to me. Um, I am very snow averse and we have had a lot of it um, where I am. But the depiction of snow here is beautiful, so I like that. Scorpion. Oh, these few are, are very, very dark, almost hard to see there. Scorpion. Grasshopper. Mountain lion. He's beautiful. Cactus. I don't readily associate cactuses with um, night, but I'll have to read that one to see. Kiwi, a favorite bird to see in oracle decks. Doesn't always turn up, but I do like that kiwi. I've never met a kiwi, but they look like they have quite the personality, don't they? Night blooming water lily. Hyena, and it's very dark, but the hyena has babies there. I really like hyena. Datura? I'm not sure if I'm going to say that one right. I will say Datura. Tide pool. Oh, this is a favorite. This one's a favorite. Tide pool. The possum with the O, so perhaps opossum, or perhaps just possum. I have met possums, they do live around where I live, so I have associations with the possum, um, having grown up with those around. Lavender, beautiful. Of course, bat. Clownfish and anemone, so there's two here. And I feel like clownfish and anemone are um, kind of symbiotic, right? They, they rely on each other, so lots to get from that. Fireflies. One of my favorite things to see camping. 
And finally, the last card is Dawn. So just going back, the, the card started with Dusk with the setting sun there, and we ended at Dawn. So they're somewhat similar, but um, very different kind of associations, right? So really um, a lot to, to do um, with these. I do um, like oracle cards like this that don't have too much text on them um, so that, you know, they come with the keywords that are in the guidebook, but you don't um, feel too tied to what's there, right? Um, because inevitably we will all have our own associations with um, with these cards and not having the keyword there allows it to kind of um, generate in your mind what you think of um, when you see that um, that card. So that's the Nocturnal Oracle by Megan Weirwiden of The Creeping Moon. I will post uh, her website and where you can order this deck in the description box below. And thanks for, for tuning in and for, for sticking around this long for my lengthy uh, unboxing video. And I will see everyone again soon. Bye.